Hey gorgeous souls and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another one of my videos today. So today's video is a podcast episode with the wonderful Dougal Fraser. So Dougal is an author and he is a colour therapist. So he teaches all things colour, he works with the angels and I really wanted to get Dougal on the podcast because I've never spoken to a colour therapist before and colours really fascinate me and it was just such a amazing conversation to speak with Dougal and understand why we choose certain colours, why we feel drawn to wearing certain colours or decorating our homes with certain colours. So it was such an eye-opening podcast for me. I've learned so much from it. I've got Dougal's book from it since and I'm loving reading it. So I really hope if you're fascinated by colours as well and wondering why you feel drawn to wearing certain colours or having certain colours in your home, this will make total sense to you. But I really hope you're going to enjoy this conversation and of course I have a whole playlist here over on YouTube on my YouTube channel of guest interviews on Spiritual Queen's Badass Podcast which is my podcast which is available on iTunes, Acast and Spotify and anywhere that distributes podcasts. So if you want to listen to more conversations like this all about the law of attraction, spirituality um, and all things self-love then you can find it all on my podcast. Thank you so much guys for watching, I appreciate all your views and likes, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here because I would love love to see you again soon. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments box down below with your thoughts on Dougal's podcast and your biggest takeaway from this episode and of course you can join my free law of attraction support group over on Facebook where you can join myself and other like-minded souls where we talk all things law of attraction and spirituality. I hope you have a fantastic week whatever you're up to and I'll see you all in my next YouTube video which will be on Friday. Lots of love! So thank you so much guys for joining me for another one of my Spiritual Queens Badass Podcast episodes. I am so, so excited to have the lovely Dougal Fraser with us today. So Dougal, if you don't know, is an internationally recognized psychic author and cosmic coach. He utilizes color therapy, clairvoyance, intuition, empathy, interior design, and practical advice to help people assess and attain their goals and dreams, which I love this bio. I think it's awesome. Welcome to the show, Dougal. Thank Thank you, Emma. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. How are you doing today? I'm good. Well, I'm I'm running on fumes. I'm going to be totally transparent and honest. I'm very busy right now. I feel very blessed, but there is a lot going on. So I'm a little bit like, Ooh, can I manage it all? I feel you, but at least we can sit here and have this lovely conversation. We can relax and talk all things color therapy, which I am so excited to discuss here on the podcast because it fascinates me and I can't wait to learn more from you. And I'm sure everybody listening is so excited to hear all of your words of wisdom with this as well. But one question I love to ask guests when they come on, so I ask every single guest this, is when did you spiritually awaken? What's your story? It's interesting, you know, I was really lucky because my my interest in spirituality manifested from a very young age. My parents used to say that by the time I was standing in the crib, I would talk about seeing colors around people and hearing voices. And my mom was awesome about encouraging me to talk about that. I would talk about past lives. I you know, would do seances in my bedroom. I was kind of a unique child. Um, and I think a lot of parents will say things like, oh, that's an act of imagination or that stuff's not real. But my parents gave me permission to buy crystals. I started giving readings when I was eight years old with my first deck of tarot cards. So it was just sort of always inherently a part of my environment. And I was encouraged to explore. And it's some of my earliest memories are just sort of being curious of what's out there in the world. Mm, and I mean, what a childhood as well. Like, I mean, that sounds awesome to be honest. Like <laughs> seeing all these colors, buying all these crystals. Um, and like you say, giving readings. And I suppose, you know, that has really set you up for your whole life. So I don't know much about your sort of like previous careers and things. So is this always what you've done or have you had any other career paths at all? Yeah, I mean, I always knew that I was going to be a healer. So uh, I actually dropped out of high school because traditional education wasn't working for me and I enrolled in massage therapy school. And so for a period of time, I was a massage therapist and I thought things were gonna go in the direction of body work, but I was a terrible massage therapist because I talk way too much and nobody wants the massage <laughs> therapist to talk too much. And I would talk about what I was feeling during the session and intuition and doing readings at the time it was card readings. I just always thought that was a hobby. It was just gonna be something at the, on the side. And when I was 20 years old, I was living in Dallas, Texas at the time. What gay psychic moves to Dallas, Texas to find their spirituality? I have no idea, but that's how it sort of launched for me. 
And um, I had an article written about me where I was selected the best psychic in Dallas. And I immediately went from doing like two to three readings a month, just here and there, to having like a three month long waiting list and the phone is ringing off the hook. So I see that period of time as the universe saying to me, this is really what we want you to do as a healer. And that's when my professional intuitive career started. I love that. I love yeah. that. And like you say, you know, you tried different avenues, but it still kind of like led you to this spiritual path of such. Like, I love that. So let's talk about color therapy then. So what is color therapy and how did you get into this? So the way that my intuition manifests is that when I hear the sound of someone's voice, I actually start to see color and energy. I'll see it in my mind. I will physically see it around them. So it's technically the aura. And in the beginning, as a kid, I'm also a sexual abuse survivor, and in the beginning, as a kid, reading people's energy was more about me trying to figure out whether or not a situation was safe. So if I was listening to someone talk, but their aura didn't match what they were saying, I'd be like, this is not the person for me. Or if I was nervous about someone, but I could read their energy and realize, oh, this is a good fit for me. They're going to be a good friend. They're going to be safe. It's a good example. It's a good environment for me. I was sort of starting to read energy. And then as I progressed, I started to notice repetitive symbols and colors around people. If someone was self-employed, I would always see gold around them. If someone was creative, I would always see green around them. So I started to take note. I started to watch other people's bodies of work with aura and color therapy and stuff like that. But over 20 years now, I cannot believe I've been doing this for over 20 years, but after over 20 years now, I've sort of gathered this body of work of how we can use color and energy to shift our own consciousness. The colors that we wear when we get dressed mean something. The colors that we surround ourselves in our home mean something. And I think it's a really cool bridge between the spiritual world and the physical world. Mm -hmm. Like, I can go to a chakra workshop and I can understand it, but have I ever really seen my chakra? I don't know. Or like, I, I understand where the planets are in terms of my astrological chart, but with color, yeah, if I put on a red sweater, I'm gonna understand how that makes me feel. Or if I'm in a room with a color that feels too cold or too sharp for me, what does that mean? It's a very tangible form of energy work that I think is sometimes overlooked. Mm, it massively is and I really agree with you like when we put on a certain outfit or we wear our favorite top or whatever like you know it does give us energy and I definitely notice those themes around that but I have to be honest and I was so excited for this conversation because like I have to ask Google this for like the last year I have been so drawn to neutral colors and yeah. brown is like the latest like I must have everything brown yeah and I'm like I wonder what that means because I used to wear quite bright colors and blues and I'm like has to be beige has to be neutral has to be brown <laughs> so here's the interesting thing about that when people hear color therapy they think of big bold colors right so they expect me to show up in like a rainbow blazer and like turquoise pants like which is fine if that's what you're drawn to please do all, do go. <laughs> <laughs> all color has power or people will joke with me and say like, oh, you must see brown in my aura. That's not a bad thing. Like earth tones are super sacred and mean something. So whatever color you're drawn to, this is a judgment-free zone. The universe wants us to play with stuff. It makes perfect sense to me, Emma, that you are currently drawn to earth tones because you are managing so much. When we hold space for people, when we have a business that has multifacets to it and lots of things going on, it is easy to become ungrounded. So we look towards earth tones to ground our energy. A lot of times people get disappointed when I'm on stage because I tend to wear black, brown, or gray. And I'm doing that because I feel the energy of the room. I feel the questions. I feel the excitement. I feel the creativity. And I'll physically start to get dizzy. But if I'm wearing earth tones, it really helps me organize my energy. Mm. They're also connected to the planet. They're connected to goddess. You do a lot of empowerment work for women. So it makes perfect sense to me that energies of the planet, energies of the soil, the goddess energy are calling you to help you feel integrated and balanced. The neutral stuff, like in, this is my office and people are always disappointed that I don't have like a bright red wall. I have like soft gray, mm. A, because gray is the easiest color for the eye to absorb. So it relaxes clients if they're in the space. And B, I like to put pops of color with flowers or the artwork. I'm changing throw pillows left or right. 
So neutral colors are really great for your living space to keep things sort of connected. And then you can have pops of color in other areas. Mm, definitely. I love that. I'm a big fan of interior as well. And like, I definitely feel like over the years, like I've grown and evolved, like, like you say, like I'm drawn to different colors. And now my home is like monochrome gray with pops of pink. And I'm like, yes, this is so interesting. Like, well, pink, can we go into pink? Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah. So, so pink is all about self-care and self-love. Like if you're drawn to pink, what I say in that moment is that the universe is saying they want to remind you to treat yourself the way you treat other people. And especially if anybody watching this holds space for their family or their friends or professionally, if you're some kind of a facilitator, pink is a really good reminder to take care of yourself. Like when my last book came out, Your Life in Color, I was doing an interview on television in the United States, and it was the kind of show that would have skeptics. I knew it was going to be scientists being like, well, we don't believe in intuition and da 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 And I wanted to remind myself about the importance of self-love that the only thing that matters is how I feel. So I wore jeans, a white shirt, and this pink blazer. And the reason for that is in the middle of an interview, I can't close my eyes and like sit in the lotus position, but I could see on the monitor all these different images of me in a pink shirt. So when they were giving me sort of tough questions, every time I saw that pink blazer, rather, I was reminding myself self-love, self-care. When I come home, my husband's still going to love me. My dog's still going to treat me the same way. This is just an experience. Pink is a really powerful color to help us go inside and connect with that self-love. Oh, I love that. Lovely, beautiful meaning. Like you say, it's amazing that you could have that energy with you, like in your, in your TV show, which is amazing. I love that. So why are colors so important and how do they impact our life? I think color is important because every human being on the planet is uniquely artistic and creative in some way. There are only so many like universal languages. And what I love about color is it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, your economic background, your religious background. If I say to someone, what's your favorite color? They have an answer. And then on the flip side, they also have an answer of what color they don't like. It's literally a language. It's energy that moves us. It's energy that inspires us. And for centuries, we've been decorating our bodies, whether it's makeup or, you know, we wear different colors based on holidays or special occasions. So we use it to express emotion. If that is the case, my thought was, why can't we empower ourselves to use it as a spiritual tool? So if I'm doing an interview, I might wear pink to feel more uh, self-love. If I'm writing, I will, and writing is really hard. It does not come naturally. <laughs> so I will surround myself with green to get more creative because when I see green around people, it's around like poets, writers, speakers, a chef, a painter, someone who's like so creatively expressive that if I surround myself with green, I can then call upon the artistic archetype inside of myself. So it's interesting to see the influence it has on society but then it becomes a really easy way for people to transform their energy in any situation they need to. Mm, definitely. And while we're on the subject of like books and things, I, I'm totally with you. So when I wrote Positively Wealthy, which is a blue cover, it's like white with a blue circle in the middle. Mm. I really felt it like had to be blue. Like Archangel Michael was like, blue, blue, blue. And I was like, it has to be blue. So luckily my publisher, they wanted gold. And I was like, it's not being gold guys. It has to be blue. So luckily they listened. But when I wrote Which my is next rare. one- rare. Rare, very yeah. rare, right? So when I wrote my next one or I'm writing my next one, they've just done the cover design. And I really saw green. I was like, green, 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 green. Mm. And then they came to me with these like beige, very golden beige, again, earthy tone cover. And of course, I know and love that. But I was like, how interesting that I really saw green. But actually, as soon as I saw the beige cover, I was like, yes, that is it. So I think it's really interesting, again, how like a book can convey an energy, a message with that color. And I have your book, Dougal. And can I just say, I love the cover of your book. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I was really excited when they did it, too. I was delighted by it. But what's interesting is it's not just the publishing world, it's every single industry on the planet. 
from classrooms? What is going to stimulate children's minds and give them energy? When you walk into a restaurant, people will literally select colors that they think will stimulate your appetite. Certain stores will use colors to get you out of there faster, make your purchase get out of there. So it's like this secret language that's been there for so, so long, the cover of your book, the color of your car, like it's been around us for so long. Now I think people just realize that we can use it on our own. I kind of compare it to astrology. Like I'm a Taurus, I'm a little bit of a homebody. Imagine for a day being able to be like, well, today I'm gonna to be a Leo and I'm gonna be outgoing and get out there. Like you can't do that with astrology, but with energy, with vibration, with your aura, you can visualize a color, wear a color, select the color of your book to portray or send energy to the universe and the world of this is who I am, this is my vibe. And I just think that's super, super cool. It is. You're so right. And this leads me on perfectly to my next question is how can we use color to manifest and shift us? So if we're wanting to manifest some more abundance, we're feeling like I really want some shift and change. What colors would be our best colors to wear or work with? So green is the best color for manifesting. And here's why. I find the happiest people. And when I say happy, that doesn't necessarily mean they're the wealthiest. That doesn't necessarily mean they're the most successful, but the happiest people are expressing who they are, their most authentic self to the planet clearly. And that's green. It's the color of communication. If you go to a bank and you're asking for a business loan, you have to express your vision so clearly to that investor that they get excited about it. If you're trying to manifest a soulmate in your life, whether you're using an app or you're at a party, you need to express who you are as clearly as possible. Health, wellness, success, books, writing, all of it, it all comes down to communication. So what I tell people when it comes to manifesting something, if you feel like you're not moving forward, if you're not getting the things that you desire as quickly as you want, take a look at how you're communicating it to the planet. You know, if I'm not excited about a topic, if I'm not excited about my book, it won't move energy. But if I talk from my heart and say, I love this stuff and I'm interested in this and I communicate clearly, we move energy. So green is the perfect color to move energy. If you go to a gallery and you see a painting that makes you weep because it's so moving, or you see a song or you listen to a song that makes you sing and makes you dance, that's clear communication. So green is the color of communication and creativity. It is the most important color to manifesting anything in your life. I love that. Well, you'll be seeing me very soon, Dougal. Dressed in all green. <laughs> Dressed in green. <laughs> I love it. And I'll here's the thing. green decor in. To be honest, I have a lot of plants in my house. So the green, I would say, is That's what I was going to say. When it comes, if you don't want to wear green, like green isn't a color that I naturally pull out of my closet. But I always tell people to look at my socks because that's usually the color that I'm currently activating. So I might have green socks. I might have a green pocket square in my jacket or something like that. Green plants are super, super um, powerful. And what's interesting is in the book, I, I get a little nerdy with science stuff too. So we go into like scientific research that green actually does stimulate creativity. So on my um, wallpaper on my computer is usually green to sort of stimulate that writing and all that stuff. You don't always have to wear it. You can physically activate the color. You can visualize it around your being. You can surround yourself with it. Any of those things will help pull it into your life. I love that. Well, everybody listening, we're going to get on that green energy. <laughs> So how can we then bring this into our homes? How can we use color in our home? Like when picking out decor and paint, et cetera, like what would you say your like go-to top tips are for decor? So the first thing that you want to do is be courageous. I think a lot of people get nervous when it comes to decorating their home with color. So they go for things that feel safe. And technically speaking, if you paint an accent wall and you're no longer vibing with the color, which is normal, we sort of go through color cycles, it's not that expensive to go get another can of paint and, and redo it, but play with it a little bit. People love to tell me the colors that make them feel comfortable and make them feel safe but it's the colors that stir emotion and energy in us where the real wisdom is. Like red for a long time made me really uncomfortable. And, and the thought of wearing red, I'd be like, oh, that's just too bold. And yet the few times that I wear it, it's the time that I receive the most compliments. People constantly point it out. 
So when I lived in New York City, I painted my foyer red to kind of get comfortable with it. And it seemed really bold, but red was about the exchange of emotions. And I was single and I was looking for love and you know, trying to decide what my soul group was and were these the right relationships for me. So when it comes to your home, be playful. You know, Try a different color of sheets just to see how it fits your bed and how it makes you feel. Buy a color of flowers that you normally wouldn't do and place them in the center of your home and see what emotion it moves for you. Colors that you like, easy. Colors that make you a little bit uncomfortable, that's where real wisdom is. Mm, definitely. I mean, I think purple for me has always been like, um, so one of my friends, she's like obsessed with purple, like her whole salon's purple, like purple nails, purple everything. And she's like, come on, I'm gonna have purple nails. And I'm like, Jordan, I'm not having anything purple at really? all. Really? No, like <laughs> it's just not a color I want to wear or have. And it's just so strange. And then, you know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, it wouldn't be that bad to wear purple. Oh, it wouldn't be like, but I just can't imagine myself painting anything purple if I'm honest, but I would be open to like a purple cushion. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, here's what's interesting to me. Nail color is a great, that's a great example. Cause that's even easier. If you really don't like it after a week, you can change it or even toenail color. Like you can start quietly before anybody sees it. It's interesting to me because purple is the color of leadership. It's the color of destiny and you're such a natural leader um, like that comes to you so so I wonder if I may say I wonder if playing with purple for a while like giving yourself permission to embody what you've created giving yourself permission to sort of recognize like I'm doing a really good job here like I move energy for people but one of my favorite things of purple is that when someone accesses purple, they're comfortable in that leadership role. They feel aligned with their destiny. It's a really powerful color. So anybody out there, whether it's your nails or a pillow or some purple flowers or something like that, that helps us feel really at peace with our destiny and the sort of trajectory of our life. So I think if you play with it a little bit more, I think it will feel more familiar to you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How funny. Well, I'm going to start with a purple background on my phone. Yeah. Maybe my nails if I'm feeling <laughs> feisty. <laughs> we'll go from there. I love it. <laughs> it is so interesting, like you say, because um, there's so many things in life where it's like the thing you fear the most is actually what you need to work with. And I've always wondered like, mm, purple It's definitely purple for me. So it's so interesting, the meaning behind it, because like you say, I'm like, oh, how can I embody that more? How can I feel comfortable with that? So I'm going to have a play with that. I'm definitely going to do my homework, Google and cool. try it I out. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> So how can we intuitively connect to color and our aura then? And what, can, so what kind of, how can we identify what colors can help us at this time? Okay, so two things with the aura. The aura is the vibe, right? We, we say things like, I had a connection with that person. You're talking about the aura. We had chemistry together. You're talking about the aura. I got a weird feeling from them. You're talking about the aura. So the aura is just like what you exude when you walk into a room. So the first thing that we want to think about is just to be conscious of it. Like if I get on a plane, I pull my energy in. I don't necessarily want to talk to that person. I want to get to my destination. I'm recharging my energy. If I'm on stage or if I'm at a party and I'm connecting with people, I expand my energy. I want to be open. I want to feel approachable. The next thing you can do is start thinking about visualizing a color. We've gone through some, a few of them today. If you feel like you need some self-love, visualize pink in your energy. Feel that sweet, tender, soft love coming around you. If you feel like you need to be a leader at work, maybe you want more recognition, visualize purple. Once we activate a color, which is much more simple than we think, it's literally just thinking about it. You can take it to the next level with your uh, clothes that you're wearing or your nail color or however else you want to manifest it physically. But once you think of an invite a vibration in, it literally shifts your aura. Then we want to pay attention to how you felt and how people responded to you. Did you get along better with people when you were working with green? Did you find it easier to get work done when you were working with purple? Did it lift you out of feeling funky when you started visualizing pink? I guarantee you will start to notice very significant changes as you work and play with different energies and vibrations. Mm, I love that. And I was just thinking as well, like I was literally gifted some purple flowers at the weekend. I was like, I've got purple sat in my kitchen. So I might put it in my office and like yeah. <laughs> bring it into the workspace. Yeah. So that's interesting. So the universe will deliver messages in forms of color. 
So you receiving purple flowers, then we're having the conversation about purple. Your friend saying, why don't we try purple nails? The universe is trying to say to you, we see you as a leader. We see you. We see the work that you're doing. We're complimenting you. So this will happen to me all the time. There was a period of time where red kept coming towards me and I was pushing it away. And so we call that a universal activation. So once you start working with a color, it will repeat itself in the same way that numbers do, right? Maybe you're really drawn to 1212. You keep seeing it on the clock. You saw it on the price of something. So it's the same thing with color. The message will start repeating itself in your world and you can start taking notice of it. But that's super cool that someone, that's the second person that's been calling purple to you. So the universe is trying to compliment you as a leader. Oh, well, I'm here for it. I'm here yeah. to accept the assignment. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so my last question to you today then, Dougal, is what is one piece of life advice that you would like to leave my listeners with today? Okay, so as an intuitive, I have the great pleasure of people coming to me for advice and seeking counsel, which is so lovely. And the way that I perceive that is I feel like it's sort of like the universe hands me the autobiography of your life and I get to read the book jacket and skim some of the pages and see some of the exciting things that's going on. But at the end of the day, the most accurate intuitive advice you can receive is going to be from yourself. And I know when people hear me talk, they think, oh, well, I don't see energy or I don't have the same experience, but you do in some level. And so what I always want to leave people with is find a way to go inside of yourself, whether it's through meditation or prayers or affirmations or mantra, listen to that part of your mind and your soul that knows exactly the best decisions for you, because we are all inherently intuitive and the best guidance you can receive is from self. Yes, love that, Dougal. (laughs) Lovely advice. So where can my lovely listeners find more about your work if they want to come and find you, Dougal? You can find me at dougalfraser.com, which is D-O-U-G-A-L-L-F-R-A-S-E-R.com. I'm on Instagram at Dougal Fraser. I'm on Facebook, on Twitter, and all of the things. Uh, I did a uh, recording with an interview with you on my YouTube channel, so they can check out that as well, but you can find me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're about <laughs> exactly and i'll put Dougal's links in the description as well for you guys so you have some easy clickable links as well to go and find his channels but what's next for you Dougal? what are you working on at the moment what have you got which everybody can go and explore the next thing that i'm working on right now is with my friend radley valentine we have an oracle deck called angels and auras coming out in 2023 through hay house which is super exciting so i'm working on that that is a lot harder than i expected <laughs> <laughs> but it's been really fun. So we're working on that. Um, I have lots of online programs and ways to sort of help support you during your spiritual journey and hopefully fun stuff coming up. I love that. Well, good luck with the deck. I will Thank absolutely you. be checking that out because I love Radley's work as well. It's, and he's so great. Angels and auras. Hello. Yes, we want some of that. <laughs> It's been, you know, it's funny. We just had this idea for like one weekend workshop and it's turned into a certification program and grown in this like amazing community. It's just been really, really exciting. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much, Dougal, for coming on. It has been such a pleasure and honor having you here today. And I'm sure everybody listening has taken so much away and is going to be working with a whole array of new colors to bring in some good vibes. So thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been fun.